Hey folks, today let's take a stroll down memory lane to 1978 and explore the film days of heaven. No need for fancy words or intricate details, here are just the facts. Directed by Terrence Malick, this cinematic piece has managed to stand the test of time. What makes it timeless? What enduring qualities do you think make it an everlasting symbol of the industry? Drop your thoughts below. Now, let's get to the good stuff. Why should you keep watching? Well, there are plenty of funny, shocking, and sad facts waiting to unfold. Intrigued? Stick around. And speaking of sticking around, when was the first time you watched this movie? Share your initial impressions, we're curious. As you reflect, consider your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this film. Any special moments that linger in your mind? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, buckle up for a journey into the world of Days of Heaven, where each scene unfolds like a captivating story. And remember, there are many more surprises ahead. Keep those eyes glued to the screen. Your stories await. Terrence Malick's cinematic masterpiece, Days of Heaven, released in 1978, left an enduring impact on both audiences and the world of cinema. Set against the backdrop of the Texas Panhandle during World War I, the film explores themes of love, deceit, and the human condition. Upon its release, it garnered critical acclaim for visually stunning cinematography, courtesy of Nestor Almendros and Haska Wexler. The movie's ethereal and poetic visuals, combined with Ennio Morricone's haunting musical score, created a cinematic experience that resonated deeply with viewers. During its time, the film faced a mixed reception at the box office, but its artistic merit and unique storytelling captivated those who sought a departure from conventional narratives. The impact of the work was felt not only in the realm of cinema, but also in broader popular culture. Its influence extended beyond the silver screen, leading to the creation of various spin-offs and adaptations in different art forms. Days of Heaven inspired a renewed wood interest in the historical setting and themes explored, giving rise to novels, artworks, and even theatrical productions that drew inspiration from Malick's creation. Merchandise related to the masterpiece, such as posters, soundtrack albums, and collector's items, became sought after among cinephiles and collectors. Its enduring legacy was further solidified by inclusion in retrospectives, film festivals, and academic discussions, cementing its place in the annals of cinematic history. In the years that followed, filmmakers and artists cited it as a source of inspiration for its innovative approach to storytelling and visual aesthetics. Its impact on popular culture reverberated through subsequent generations, influencing the way stories were told and pushing the boundaries of cinematic expression. The legacy can be seen not only in the continued admiration for the work itself, but also in the ripple effect it had on the broader landscape of storytelling in the film industry. The influence is a testament to the power of art to shape culture and leave an indelible mark on the collective imagination. Behind the scenes of the 1978 film Days of Heaven, there unfolded a series of captivating stories and amusing bloopers that added an extra layer of charm to the production. Directed by Terrence Malick, the movie is known for its stunning cinematography and compelling narrative. However, the journey to create this cinematic masterpiece was not without its share of interesting incidents. One notable anecdote involves the challenges faced by the cast and crew while filming in the vast fields of Alberta, Canada. The picturesque landscapes became both a blessing and a curse. The beauty of the setting posed a challenge for the lighting team as capturing the perfect shot required meticulous planning to synchronize with the ever-changing natural light. This struggle with lighting often led to spontaneous adjustments, showcasing the crew's adaptability in the face of unexpected obstacles. Another amusing behind-the-scenes story revolves around the use of animals in the film. The movie features several scenes with animals, including a swarm of locusts. Coordinating the movements of these creatures proved to be a comical challenge. There were moments when the locusts, meant to create a dramatic atmosphere, decided to go off script and swarm in unintended directions. The cast and crew had to improvise on the spot, turning unexpected locust antics into moments of unexpected humor. The camaraderie among the cast was evident during the production, creating a light-hearted atmosphere offsetting the intensity of the film's narrative. Richard Gere, Brooke Adams, and Linda Mance formed a close-knit trio, and their off-screen chemistry translated seamlessly on camera. 
Mance, in particular, brought a natural and unscripted quality to her performance, with some of her memorable lines emerging spontaneously during the shoot. Despite the challenges, the behind-the-scenes stories underscore the collaborative spirit and creativity that shaped the film. These tales offer a glimpse into the dedication and resilience of the cast and crew as they navigated the complexities of nature and filmmaking to bring Terrence Malick's vision to life. In conclusion, the behind-the-scenes stories provide a delightful peek into the dynamic and unpredictable world of filmmaking, showcasing the creativity and camaraderie that fueled this iconic production. Based on the narrative woven in Alexander Dumas, The Three Musketeers, the screenplay of Days of Heaven loosely adapts the Melody backstory where Anne de Buell turned thief and her renounced priest lover assumes sibling identities to evade capture. The Italian adaptation, The Executioner of Lil, mirrors these events with distinct character motivations. During filming, cinematographer Maestro Almendros faced impending blindness. Prior to each shot, he relied on a Polaroid photo taken by his assistant, examining it through a magnifying glass. Notably, Days of Heaven marked Sam Shepard's debut in a substantial screen role, shifting from his established playwright identity. In summary, the film's narrative draws from Duma's work, the cinematography faced unique challenges due to Almendro's failing eyesight, and Sam Shepard transitioned from playwright to a notable screen presence. Blown up to 70mm for re-release, prints of the film were accidentally lost when a Paramount memo requesting the destruction of surplus copies of another movie was misinterpreted. Cinematographer Haskell Wexler, credited for additional photography, voiced his complaint to Roger Ebert, stating that more than half of the footage was actually shot by him. The movie was primarily filmed in Whiskey Gap, Alberta, Canada, a ghost town setting. Cinematographer Nestor Almendros faced challenges during filming, relying on Polaroid photos due to impending blindness. Sam Shepard made his significant screen debut, transitioning from his established playwright identity. In summary, the film faced setbacks with lost prints, a dispute over cinematography credits, and unique challenges during filming. Sam Shepard marked a notable shift in his career, making Days of Heaven a distinct chapter in cinema history. Comedian Red Fox earned a special mention in the closing credits for contributing a joke to a memorable exchange between Bill and Linda. In this scene, Bill, portrayed by Richard Gere, utters, I saved your life today, to which Linda, played by Linda Mance, responds, How? With Bill stating, I killed a shit-eating dog. Director Terrence Malick took an unconventional approach, encouraging the cast to improvise their lines. This creative freedom led to spontaneous and authentic moments, enhancing the film's realism. However, not everyone embraced Malick and cinematographer Nestor Almendro's seemingly undisciplined working style. Several crew members quit due to the lack of adherence to schedules, with filming dictated by the day's weather conditions. The unique working methods, coupled with improvisation, resulted in a distinct cinematic experience showcasing a raw and unscripted aspect of storytelling. Despite challenges, these unconventional choices contributed to the film's authenticity and marked it as a notable chapter in cinema history. The opening credits are accompanied by Camille Saint Sainz Aquarium, a piece from Carnival of the Animals, setting the tone for the film's atmosphere. Much of the footage captures the elusive magic hour, that brief period between sunset and nightfall, lasting around 25 minutes. Despite gaining recognition for his role in Looking for Mr. Goodbar, Richard Gere actually filmed this project first. However, a two-year editing process delayed its release until 1978. The film's unique musical choice, the cinematic capture of the ethereal magic hour, and the delayed release due to extensive editing contribute to the distinctiveness of the narrative. It's a testament to the dedication and creative choices made during the production, showcasing the artistry of the filmmaking process. The article wraps up these intriguing facets of Days of Heaven, a cinematic gem. The scene featuring locusts ascending was cleverly shot in reverse, with a helicopter crew tossing peanut shells downwards while actors walked backward. This unconventional technique resulted in a visually striking portrayal of the locust movement, adding a unique touch to the film's aesthetic. To maintain authenticity, costume designer Patricia Norris crafted outfits from used fabrics and old clothes, steering clear of the artificial appearance often associated with studio-made period films. This choice contributed to the film's realistic atmosphere, aligning with the unconventional approach embraced by the director and cinematographer. 
For the close-ups of the locusts, thousands of live ones were sourced from Canada's Department of Agriculture. This meticulous attention to detail, utilizing live insects rather than relying on special effects, underscores the commitment to capturing genuine and vivid moments in the film. In summary, Days of Heaven employed innovative filming techniques such as reversing scenes and incorporating live locusts to create a distinctive visual experience. The commitment to authenticity extended to the costume design, with Patricia Norris opting for recycled materials, enhancing the film's realistic portrayal. These unconventional choices, while challenging, contributed to the film's unique charm, making it a notable chapter in cinema history. After a year of editing, Terrence Malick called Sam Shepard to Los Angeles for additional shots. Close-ups of the actor were filmed under a freeway overpass, later integrated into the final film. Malick dedicated two years to editing, ultimately discarding much of the original dialogue. Voiceovers by Linda Mance replaced the dialogue, creating a more coherent storyline. Despite its commercial failure, Charlie Bluedorn, head of Paramount's parent company Gulf Plus Western, admired the film. Impressed, he offered Malik $1 million for his next project. In conclusion, Days of Heaven underwent extensive editing, incorporating additional shots for narrative coherence. Despite its commercial struggles, the film garnered significant admiration, leading to a generous offer for Malik's future endeavors.